day grade nines and welcome to our natural sciences lesson brought to you by worksheet cloud if you have a question during the lesson send an email with your question to grade nine at worksheetcloud.com my name is mrs ernston and i'm the worksheet cloud grade nine natural sciences teacher I would just like to share some of our purpose and values with you here at Worksheet Cloud. One of our purposes is to create happy families, whereby we provide a platform for parents to help their children, or for slightly older children, a space where you will feel empowered to be in control of your learning so that you are able to be a success. So I hope that we are achieving our purpose and I hope that you are engaged in these lessons and that you are finding that they are, have definitely put you on a pathway to success. The work we're covering in today's lesson is the reactions of iron with oxygen. We're going to have a look at what happens when iron reacts with oxygen and what is this product called? How can we represent the reaction between iron and oxygen? What is a combustion reaction? What is rust and how does it form? And how can iron be made more rust resistant? So I would like you to take a moment and have a look at these images in front of you. What are the similarities between these images? I know when I have a look at it, the first word that jumped to my mind was rust. Rust is a word to describe the flaky, crusty, reddish-brown product known as iron oxide that forms on iron when it reacts with oxygen in the air. The word equation is iron plus oxygen gives us iron oxide. And we get this word equation from the statement when iron rusts, it is because the iron metal reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron oxide. We can represent this statement and word equation with ball diagrams. And from this, we are able to represent it in chemical reaction formulae which would be four molecules of iron plus three molecules of oxygen. Remember, oxygen in its natural state is diatomic, plus two molecules of iron oxide. Rust is a form of iron oxide. And we use the chemical formula Fe2O3 to represent the compound iron oxide. When iron is exposed to oxygen and air, a similar reaction, which we are comparing to the burning of iron and oxygen, occurs, but it happens more slowly. The iron is gradually eaten away as it slowly reacts with the oxygen. Under wet conditions, iron will rust more quickly. So rust is actually a mixture of different oxides in iron. And Fe2O3 is an important part of that. So the rusting of iron is actually a good example of the process of corrosion. I'm not too sure if you have ever noticed that rusting tends to happen far faster at the ocean. Not only are there water droplets, but these droplets have salt in them, and this makes them more corrosive. Rusting also happens more quickly in the presence of acids. And in laboratories or factories where acids are used or stored, the air is also very corrosive. And when the air in a specific area contains moisture, 
mixed with acid or salts, we refer to the area as having a corrosive climate. So now I would like us to look at scientific method and the procedures that are involved in the scientific process. I would like you to take a look at these images on the screen and I want to see if you are able to find what word goes with each of these images and through that work out the scientific process. So take a few minutes to have a look at the images and see if you can work out what each of the images are trying to represent. So the first part of our process is observation. And here we use our senses to observe the world and phenomena around us. So we use our taste, our sight, our touch, our hearing and our smell. From these observations, it leads us into being curious about the world and the phenomena around us and it leads us into asking a whole variety of inquisitive questions. From the question, we are able to generate a hypothesis. And this is a statement that we are able to prove and disprove through experimentation. So once we have our hypothesis, we can then go about planning our methodology planning what materials we need, what equipment we're going to use, and what procedure we're going to follow. Once we are finished with our planning, we move on to experimentation. And here we use the correct materials and the appropriate method, which is going to enable us to gather data. And from this data, once our experiment is complete, we are able to represent this data using tables, charts, diagrams. Once we have presented this data, we then need to go into some type of an analysis or a discussion where we look for trends, we look for differences, we look for similarities, and we try and use this data to see if our hypothesis is correct. And once we have analyzed our data, we are then able to draw a conclusion. So I would like you to bear these scientific process skills in mind as we move into a time of experimentation. I would like to do an experiment today to prove that both air and water are necessary for the rusting of iron. So I have got four test tubes here. In test tube A, we've put an iron nail and we've put boiled water and a layer of oil. In test tube B, we've got salt water and an iron nail. In test tube C, we've exposed the iron nail to air. And in test tube D, we've got an iron nail, air and some calcium chloride. And then we've put a bung or a stopper in the top of the test tube. You could try and recreate this experiment at home. I know what might help is for you to use plastic bottles with the lid still on so that you could control the amount of air that is reacting in this experiment. I know you might find it a little bit difficult to do test tube D, but I'm sure you'll be able to have fun doing test tubes A, B and C. So one of the things we need to have a look at and think about when we do scientific experiments are things that we call fixed variables. And those are variables that we can control. Then we also have the independent variable. And those are the different factors that we are looking at at the beginning of the experiment. That is the input. And then we have the dependent variable. And that is the 
output variable and that is the results what are we wanting to get out of this experiment so we are wanting to record whether or not we can see rusting on these iron nails our independent variable are the different situations we've created for example boiled water with an oil layer what we've tried to do in that test tube is take away any oxygen so when you boil water we remove the oxygen and then by putting a layer of top we ensure that no oxygen is able to diffuse from the air into the boiled water c is salt water uh, sorry b is salt water c is just air and then d we have put calcium chloride calcium chloride is an anhydrous substance that is able to remove any moisture from inside the container so we've reduced the humidity and the amount of water in test tube d so we're going to take three test tubes a b and c and d and place one clean iron nail in each of them in test tube A, you're going to pour boiled water, which does not contain any dissolved air. You're also going to pour some oil in test tube A to form a layer over the boiled water. The layer of oil will prevent the entry of air in the water. In the test tube B, we have salt water. In test tube C, we have air. And in test tube D, we've put anhydrous calcium chloride and a cork in it. Anhydrous calcium chloride is a drying agent. So it's added to test tube D to absorb all of the moisture present in the air of the test tube. We close the mouth of the test tube with the help of a cork. And you need to keep these test tubes undisturbed for some days. I know when I carry out this experiment, a minimum of a week. And the longer you leave it, the better the results you will get. So in the experiment, the water in A was boiled to remove oxygen and then sealed with oil to stop more dissolving. In experiment B, there was plenty of water and some dissolved oxygen. It will rust. The salt will speed up the rusting, but is not necessary. The salt is a catalyst. In experiment C, there is plenty of oxygen and a little bit of water vapor. It will rust, but it will rust slowly. And then in the experiment, in D, there is no shortage of oxygen, but the calcium chloride absorbs all the moisture in the air, so we are controlling the humidity, and the bung stops any more moisture in entering, so it will not rust. So why is rust a problem? Well, let's imagine we've manufactured something out of iron. And what properties of iron do we want to take advantage of? So here we have a chain or a nail or a hinge on a door. We've picked this metal. We've picked the substance iron firstly because it's a metal, it's hard, and it is strong. So when an item is made of iron, we want to protect it from rust to prevent it from losing those desired properties. And do you think the rusty chain and door handle in the following photos will be as strong and flexible as when they were new? Why not? No, they're not going to be as strong because rust is a different compound altogether. Rust is not iron. Rust is iron oxide which means it's going to have different properties. And that means that it is going to start to weaken. So how does what you've studied about in this lesson link with the image below? Can you think of different ways in which iron and steel can be protected against rust? Remember that if you've had any questions throughout this lesson, to email your question to us, Grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com So in summary, through the section of metals reacting with oxygen, 
We've had a look at when a metal reacts with oxygen, a metal oxide forms. We've looked at the general equation of metal plus oxygen equals a metal oxide. We've looked at how some metals will react with oxygen when they burn, and these are called combustion reactions. And the two examples that we had a look at was iron reacting with oxygen to form iron oxide and magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. We've had a look that rust is a form of iron oxide and it forms slowly when iron is exposed to air. And in tomorrow's lesson, we're going on the next lesson, we're going to have a look at how iron can be transformed to steel and alloy, which is going to make it more resistant to rust. And we'll have a look at how can rust be prevented by coating iron surfaces with paint or rust resistant materials such as chrome or zinc. So what I would like you to do in the meantime, with the time you have spare with your lesson today, is start putting together a summary of how metals react with oxygen. I'd love to spend one lesson where we go through this and put this summary together for you. Great nights, it has been wonderful having you join us today. Thank you very, very much for the time that you've given up, up to watch this lesson. I hope you've learned something about rusts and iron and oxygen. And I do hope that you get creative and see if you can't carry out this experiment at home. And I'd like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing this lesson to you. Goodbye, great nines.